Hello again, it's just Cyclamont here and today we'll be talking about dynamic DNS. We need dynamic DNS to be able to enable our home server to be viewed from the outside world. Now what happens is that when we use an ADSL broadband connection the outside world only sees one device, not let's say if we have five computers at home it doesn't see five individual IP addresses, it just sees one. What makes matters worse is that every time we, we set our router, or it fails for instance, it gets a new IP address. So we don't really want to be remembering IP addresses because it's for, uh, we have to remember, you know, 210.32.64.5 for instance, and it's awfully long to remember, especially if we have to keep on updating it all the time. So dynamic DNS um, is what's going to help us with it. So what is DNS? It's a domain name system. It, it helps us to um, translate domain names like clementmusic.com to a binary identifiers or an IP address like 210.62.44.08. Okay, so how it actually really works is that, uh, let's say um, you're trying to look for my domain names. You, you're going into www.clementmusic.com and you're in America, for instance, and it goes, I don't know where this is. So it asks the ISP's DNS, and it goes, I don't actually know where it is. So it goes and asks its local DNS, and it keeps on going until it finds where it is. So it keeps on querying each DNS server that it knows up in the line until it knows. So it goes until the Australasian DNS, and it'll go, hey, I know where this is. This is located somewhere in New Zealand, and it will point to the web hosting company that I'm hosting it with. Okay, so with a dynamic DNS, we can use a service like noip.com and register with them and update, use an update client to update our um, IP address with them um, so that every time someone uh, goes on to clement.zepto.org, which I've got from noip.com, um, noip registers it with the DNS servers around the place, telling it that, hey, look, this one here ask me where it is, and when the DNS um, servers ask noip.com where it is, it says it's at this address here, it's at 121.33.48.6, whatever it might be. What we're going to do today is go over to noip.com, register a new user, and I'll show you how to set up a new host, and once we've done that, um, our next video we're going to show you how to do install the application onto our Ubuntu server and show you how to input your data on there so you can update it and it will run in the background as well. So let's um, open up our browser and go to noip.com. Okay, now that you've got your browser open, just go www.no-ip.com and just go into the login page. I've already registered here, so I'm just going to enter my credentials. Now it's very easy, it's two pages to actually um, get it done. What it does for you when you add your new host, it will actually look at your IP address that you um, actually have. So this is my IP address now, 192.98.146.30. And when you go add a host, you can go and type in your host name. Now there's only a few that you can actually choose from, the rest of them you have to buy. So zepto.org is the only one that I can think of at the moment so let's just go okay now we've got that um, create host so it tells your IP address already now you need to be able to up Dated, I think every 60 days to keep your account active so it's a free service you can have up to five different hosts so a great little tool and every time you log in you can go manage host and update it that way if you have it if it needs it to be changed otherwise you just download the program to run it so if you have a Windows a machine that you want to do it on you can do it that way but we'll show you how to do it on the Ubuntu machine so once again thank you for viewing my video um, watch the next video so we can get it installed onto your machine. Uh, but please subscribe and signing off, just like Lamont. Thank you.